So how did you first get work in the UK? What happened? You, you came over here, um, you jumped off the plane. I jumped off the plane. Found a room to rent. I found, well, that's, that was kind of the key to it, because the one thing I did have was a connection to Penny Robinson of the townhouse right. management. Uh -huh. And uh, I was looking for a room, but I was looking for a management as well. Yeah. And out of all the phone calls I've made and all the letters I sent, the townhouse, it was funny because uh, the townhouse studio manager called me back and I had a meeting with Penny Robinson, which he used to be in the same building. Yeah. So uh, in the same day, within the same day, I, I ended up renting uh, a room at the townhouse and uh, joining townhouse management. Right. So Penny was amazing. She, she gave me a break because, you know, when you come to this country, like all the credits, all the past things, albums, hits, it doesn't really matter because it's, you know, it's not uh, uh, local. So, mm. um, so you have to start from scratch. Yeah. And, um, which I did. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm here now. <laughs> so what were your first few projects like in the UK? What, what sort of things were you doing? I mean, I noticed on your credits you have a lot of credits as a uh, programmer. Yeah. So you, presumably you've got quite a lot of work doing programming. Yeah, because I thought that the way to kind of um, to get in hmm. would be through programming. Because what year was it when you arrived here? What? 98. 98, yeah. Mm -hmm. So so programming yeah, was quite Yeah, now I don't think it but its role even exists anymore. Well, I suppose everyone is a problem. Yeah, I guess the, the people don't have the budget to book somebody to separately yeah. to do that. And every engineer knows a bit of programming now, don't yeah, they? Yeah, exactly. So, um, did you work on tape originally? Then were you a, a tape yeah. user? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I worked on tape. I so, in '98, when you came here, were people still using tape? And yeah, absolutely. Really? Yeah. Absolutely, all the time. And even even when the sessions were kind of edited. In Pro Tools, but then they were bounced back to tape, yeah. and it was mixed through tape. Yeah. And, uh, I I used to mix on three tapes, like uh, seventy-two tracks on yeah. uh, in the townhouse. We had uh, three studios there. Yeah. Uh, so, what were the programming sessions like? Were you actually sort of sitting at the back of the session, programming, or was it something you give be given a task to do? And a then bit go? of both. A yeah, bit of both. Because it was very convenient because my room was just downstairs. Yeah, and everything was set up. And I used to take a small, um, like a portable PC upstairs to the studio and I used to do stuff there and um, network it down to my room and, right. and you know. And so did you buy a load of your own gear when you arrived here then? Did you buy your own stuff? I actually you? brought, uh, I think yeah. it was uh, 1,200 kilos. Yeah, so, it was so quite, you had a few things. I had a few things, yeah. Um, and a few, all the, not all, but some of the analog stuff, and and I, I had a lot of synths, which yeah. I still have, but yeah. a bit uh, surplus these days. Um, but I still use them actually. Yeah. Uh, actually, yesterday I used the virus. I have the first yeah. one. Wow. Uh, not the C, not the B, not yeah. the A, just virus. A classic original. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but going through the Neve and all, it's. it's, it's yeah, Still sounds good. Still sounds good. So do you, you don't use the TDM one then, the uh, Axis? I used to. When, when it first came out, I used to. Is the is the hardware better? Um, it would be. It wouldn't be fair to comment because I had used it so long ago, yeah. and it was the first I guess one. It's the convenience of having the knobs on the front of the thing, though, isn't it? If you're going yeah. to use the real one. Yeah. So. I actually, when it, when it first came out, I used it. It was the first thing that had so many knobs that yeah. were, you know, uh, MIDI kind of. Uh, yeah. So I I built um, in the Logic environment. I built a mixer that you could have uh, an EQ, eight auxiliaries, volume, and pan on each channel, and you would move it with a, with a cursor. And it would show you when you move the cursor, like you would select channels, it would show you a little label that would show you which channel you were on. I spent ages doing that, and I never actually used it. <laughs> <laughs> it just I had to because it was there, you know. So, have you always been a Logic user? Then is that? Um, I actually started on Pro 24, which is Steinberg. Yeah, so did I. Um, 
and even one before then, before the Atari ST, which I don't know, it wasn't an Atari, which had like f five function keys, m metal function keys on the side. All right. I don't remember what the software called, uh, but it was like on a green screen. Oh, okay, yeah. And you used to, in order to press record, you used to press like five function keys and A and space or something, yeah. and then it would show the activity meter would like dollars, pounds, uh, you know, it, would, <laughs> it wasn't even graphic, it was, uh, um, but then on the Atari, on the ST yeah. 10.4, something 10 like 40. that, yeah, 10.4, 10 yeah, uh, I used uh, Pro 24 and then C-Lab. So these sessions you were doing at the townhouse, they were mostly pop sessions and you'd be mm -hmm. brought in as programmer, Yeah. and then presumably you then tried to sort of get into doing more engineering and producing well, as well. Yeah, uh, um, I think that programming led to production. Um, I had uh, um, a good break with uh, the Sugar Babes. Right. Um, and this Gary Newman yes. song yeah. was the first one, I think, that was kind of big, and then Round Round, and all the other. And, um, and then I produced uh, Gems' album. Yeah. Uh, which did quite well. Uh, actually, a funny story about that. And the, there's a song, that I think, the single they, if you remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, I bought the album, yeah. There's a, oh, great. Thanks. <laughs> One P for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, there's a double bass there. Uh, and actually, I in the townhouse, in the cor on the corridor, there was a double bass right. just there. Oh right! So I I don't know who whose it was, <laughs> but I just snapped it, and uh, and I held it like that <laughs> because you know I couldn't find out what I had to do. But, and I just played the bass very very quickly and yeah. put it back where I found <laughs> it. <laughs> so, um, so that was fun. Brilliant. Um, no, but we had loads of fun uh, on this album. Jem is great. I just love her. Um, and um, yeah, and you know, one thing led to another. Yeah. So you have Pro Tools as well here. I saw it on. I saw it mm -hmm. earlier on the screen. Is that running on a separate computer? Or have you got? Uh, How's that work? What's going on here? What's going on? Well, so you've got I Logic in the middle. I have. You've got uh, a cassette tape on that one. Yeah, this is this is an, another Pro Tools system, which is my two-track recorder. Okay. So that would record the mix, and that is actually living on a, on a different computer, which is controlled by this computer. Right. So see, but what, this one is mainly controlling um, other computers. This this one is controlling the uh, Creamware, which is uh, basically all the digital connections. Wow. They connect uh, everything. Right. Uh, all the computers, each one represents eight uh, outputs of a oh, computer and they're yeah. all connected together. And one of the nice things I have here is that the talkback is gated, as you can see. Yeah. But it's also ducked yeah. by the program. Right. So I don't have ever to press this again. Okay. Uh, well. Which I hate. I see. So, uh, what about when you want to say rude things about the people out there, though? You can't. I don't <laughs> think it's fair, actually. That's good. No, I like that. I like that. So, yeah. uh, so when when any music will be playing, the talker will be ducked by like 40 dB or something like that. Right. So, uh, yeah. so this is very convenient. We used to do that with a noise gate and the SMPTE code. Yeah. 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 Auto input uh, sort of thing on the talkback or something Excellent. like that. Um, so yeah, so on this screen I mainly control. And that's your oil pressure. Exactly. Um, and then I have Protus and Logic running on the same computer, uh -huh. uh, where mostly Protus will be doing the convert converting, like the A to B B to A, and Logic will be inserted on that. So I have forty eight. Uh, Inputs and outputs from logic. To so that's problems. done physically by digital routing. Yeah, I see. Uh, so they're both running on different sound cards. Yeah, 
But there's any, you've got enough horsepower in the computer for them to yeah, because coexist. It's a CBM, so it doesn't really yeah. drain much, I see. except yeah. for memory. Which, mm. uh, but I mean, computers these days are a joke. You know, you can throw anything at them, and they will mm. just laugh at you. Yeah. And the thing about the the live room is, and about all the analog stuff mm. in here, is that everything is connected. Right at all times, so yes. there's no setting up. So if I want to record drums, I just need to select the input in Pro Tools or in Logic, hmm. and it's there. Right. And it has the EQ already for the drums. Um, I have four vocal mics there, ready to go. I even have one here, portable one, yeah. if you want to do a quick guide vocal or something. So you're all, all set. All the analog synths are all connected, they all receive MIDI. Right. So you do, um, do you have a patch bay then, or do you...? I have a patch bay, which is in the back. So do you do much songwriting as well? Do you co-write with people? I do. I do. On, on uh, albums I produce, I tend to write some of the songs. Uh, and how does that process work? Do you write with a person in mind, or do you co-write with them when they've got some sometimes, lyrics? Sometimes I would write a track, which I think would suits. Uh, yeah. Obviously it would, would be inspired by the person I've worked with uh, yeah. or the style we, we're talking about or uh, so I would write something um, and uh, actually recently I've been in Thailand on holiday but of course I took my laptop and <laughs> this little Korg keyboard. Yeah, yeah, it's the Nano. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, so I wrote a few tracks. Great. Uh, there and yeah, so um, so I, so either we would write together, or uh, I would write the track and send it, yeah. and um, then review. So do you the, still do you still play the guitar a bit? And do I do, I do, but uh, I would just grab a guitar, play a verse, <laughs> and put it back. You know, it's not like. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. tell us about um, working with Brian Adams. What was that you did on that record? Um, basically, we started the whole production process together because uh, he had um, he he writes on dictaphone. Yeah. So he would bring the files, uh, the files. He would bring the songs yeah. on a dictaphone, and right. uh, and we would just develop them. So is it him singing and playing a bit of acoustic guitar or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and I would. Um, did he come here? Did he? It was still at the townhouse. Right, right. It was still in the townhouse. Right, right. the townhouse. Yeah. Um, uh, and we just um, really really cool guy. Yeah. We got why do you, Why really do you think well. he came to you? Well, then, what what was it that he liked about your? Because you'd been doing I don't know. pop really, hadn't you? Yeah, I actually tried to 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 take it into a more um, sort of. I don't know, less kind of guitar based, uh, but with Brian it's it's a bit impossible to do because <laughs> that's what he's about. Yeah. Um, but um, the thing is, I didn't know he played bass, so I I just uh, played bass right throughout. Yeah. And he was just sitting there and saying yeah yeah, and I didn't even at and then I I watched um, one of his uh, shows on telly where he, it was just the three of them, like the guitarist, the drummer and him, playing this amazing, kind of <laughs> getting this amazing huge rock sound and he was playing amazing bass while singing and I, it's actually it's a good thing I wasn't aware of that because it kind <laughs> of, uh, otherwise I wouldn't have dared uh, play the bass, but I did yeah. and he was just uh, going yeah, yeah and play guitars and uh, it was really cool. We had a really good time. Yeah. Um, he's a great guy. So did you engineer the sessions as well as um, producing? Or what, I, was, what was your role? Well, we did we did most of it in my studio. Yeah. Um, a lot of the guitars, a lot of the bass. Was it real drum scenes? And then he took it over to his studio in Vancouver. Oh, OK. Where he uh, overdubbed it with his uh, band, right? I which, see. Uh, yeah. you know, they play forever with him. So, uh, um, so yeah, it's really good. Mm. Um, and then you mixed it 
in your room? Or? Uh, no, I mixed uh, some of it at the townhouse and uh, Bob Clear Mountain yeah. mixed uh, the rest, which again goes with Brian Adams kind of a yeah. uh, long way back. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, but that was quite an honor to yeah. have the same mix. Yeah, like to have uh, mixes on the same album. Yeah, um, yeah, that was good fun. So, what have you been doing recently? What's been What's been happening here? Um, well, I did. Uh, I worked on the Pet Shop Boys album, the yeah. Girls Aloud album. Uh, I just f- recently finished mixing uh, an urban record with Geeks. Geeks. Yeah. Right. Uh, which is really good. Um, I'm working on two albums that I'm mixing for uh, US labels, one for Sony Columbia, uh, and one artist called Z Avi, which is doing pretty well over called, there. Called what? Z Avi. Z Avi, okay. Which is doing pretty well. Yeah. Um, the other artist has not been released yet, but right, I think right. it's going to. And what, what's coming up? What have you got next? Um, I'm finishing an album with uh, the Barbarellas, which is a pop act, really good singers, really good girls, two twins from right. Ireland. I think that this is going to be really cool. And um, and have you have you done most of the programming and playing? I did all the programming and playing. I did uh, most of the writing um, with them. Really talented. Uh, and I'm quite optimistic about that. Yeah, one. yeah, it's interesting. Going to be good. Yeah, it's um, I, you know, these days you get uh, you get some really good pop sound, especially mm. from from the US, but also from here, and it's really inspiring. Um, because so, what sort of when you're writing for something like that, what what are your sound sources? Do you use soft synths? Do you have do you use battery and libraries like that for drums, or what do you do? Um, What's your first thing you dial up on the computer? You use Stylus RMX or anything like no. that? No, no, I use EXS. I use EXS. Uh, so you just got a, you've got a Logic sample library then? Yeah. Um, do you buy extra samples or do you just? I buy some some of the samples. Uh, I use a lot. I actually use one synth which is um, called Stylent. Called what? Stylent. Stylent. Yeah, it's a weird I name. I don't know that. It's Leonard, Leonard Digital. It's a really, Leonard really Digital. good. Yeah, right. it's a really good synth. It's very okay. cheap as well. Um, so it's like an audio units thing, is it? Yeah. Um, and then uh, it's gone. Any plans? <laughs> uh, something that's wrong. Whatever. It's a really good synth. Uh, so I get a lot of the. Actually, one song on the album, I just used it solely. Right, uh, I've never even heard of it. It's really good. You should check it out. Yeah, it's a, it's like one hundred and twenty-five euros or no, something really? like that. One hundred and fifty euros. It's yeah. really cheap and it's excellent. Um, and that's so that's something you use quite extensively these yeah. days. Yeah, yeah. So one song I did only with that. Right. Um, Silently. Silent. Yeah. It's it's really good, and. I changed the skin and stuff. I think it yeah. comes in like green or oh, grey or something you can like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, so I use that. And do you buy drum libraries of loops and things then? And um, kind of stuff or? I get so many things with uh, with Logic and yes. with with all the different packages mm. that uh, with uh, Contact. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's it called? The Complete. And all yes. That. You get so you much. Got all the complete stuff. Yeah. yeah. And and I actually I actually um, convert some of it to because I like EXS is so easy to use yeah and it's really easy on your computer and all that so, right uh, yeah because it's Apple I guess it's going to work best it's just lighter so how do you convert sample libraries from XS to Contact um, from Contact to XS? if it's uh, if it's drums which is mainly what I what I would what I would use I would just um, just take Take the samples and yeah, and use and just build uh, new instruments, which is really easy with yeah. uh, with the excess uh, and and I do spend some time organizing my sounds and because yeah. because it's kind of useless having a huge library where you don't know yeah. where everything is. So do you set aside days to do things like that then? 
not or is it just as part such, of, part of your well, would, day. Exactly, I would find myself spending like two hours uh, yeah. getting organized. Yeah, like the other day I had a baseline going through the um, 101, through the SH 101, and it sounded so good that I just actually took me more than I thought it would because it took uh, 28 minutes to yeah. record the whole keyboard. Oh, I see, one note at a time. One note at a time, but then <laughs> it's so easy these days, you know. Uh, marking the transients and uh, strip silence or whatever, yeah. you, you can set it up in no time, um, as opposed to the archive days and all that. Yeah. Do you program a fill with the sounds you're mainly using? Um, yeah, I would probably just program it. Yeah. Um, or I would jump in and, uh, and play a, a take and then mess about with the noises or yeah. whatever. Have you got a kit set up out there though, yeah. usually? Yeah. That's, I was going to have a look, it's very dark, I can't see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I oh yeah, there it is. All my stuff and uh, ready to go. So that's, that's a nice shiny looking drum kit. Yeah. So that's constantly just sitting there ready to... Yeah. So sometimes I would just play a quick hi-hat, cymbals yeah. and all that, which gives the whole track uh, kind of... A bit uh, of real yes. hi-hat and cymbals, yeah. 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 Oh, I would attempt to, to play to go in and do a take. Oh, right. of which so I, would I didn't know you were a drummer as well. Well, I didn't know that as well. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, with a bit of help, yeah, uh, I can be a drummer. So have you been using the new Logic, chopping things up? Unbelievable. Sort of, yeah. Unbelievable. I use it on everything. Do you? Acoustic right. guitars, bass, Just putting things piano. In time. Yeah. yeah, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Because most of your productions sound pretty polished and fairly accurate. Well, yeah, I, I like that. I think I think I still have that from the old days of, you know, late eighties and everything when when it all used to, it all wanted to be like that. You yeah. know what I mean? And I'm still a relic of uh, of that era. Yeah. And, uh, and they say that when if you if you hang on to something long enough, it will come back in fashion, <laughs> so I'm still waiting. <laughs> no, I think people like things to be in time, generally, yeah. don't they? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the best groove is 16. Well, it's funny that, isn't it? Because they're constantly, like, I don't know if you ever use Reason, do you ever use that software? No, I haven't. And there's, there's, they're always bringing out like, the, the quantize groove mixer or all these grooves and things, but the best groove, I think you're right, is yeah. when it's on the grid, isn't it, really? Absolutely. Because if you're hearing like a Pet Shop Boys record, it's going boof. And yeah. that's there's a magic. That's thing. what you want. Yeah, craft work. People love that because it's just really solid, isn't yeah. it? And and with live drums as well. I mean, it's it, sometimes you would get this swing and all that, but um, but it's just the benefits for the sound for the you know is is so great that um, yeah. it's I think it's worth it. Because yeah. when, when you have especially when you have like five kick drums and and triggers and all that and you want to have everything kind of coherent and yes. and audible yeah. and then and manageable. Yeah, because uh, you want to know where the phase of each kick drum is uh, and uh, and and then it's so just you get into zooming in and making sure all, your, all those things. Th are. That's the first thing I would do on a yeah. session on a mix, uh, even before listening to it. I yeah. would I would look. By, by zooming in on a few key elements, I would know how good the, the programming was. Even though, having said that, these days, everyone is can be really good, because if you just use logic or, or whatever, samples, that would be accurate. Yeah. Um, but, um, but I would, but, but sometimes people use, they don't pay attention, so the, mm. the snare would be like miles out and, yeah. and all that, and, and if it lands on the kick, then I, th I think that if everything is tight, then it just sounds better. Yeah. It sounds better, there's more headroom in the mix, and then in mastering it's it's easier to, to manage. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's another thing I've been doing for a long time, which is, uh, which is mastering. Uh, right. Um, I started that in the early 90s. All right. um, actually, starting that with one of Wave's uh, first, before they did plugins, yeah. they, they had this hardware uh -huh. um, thing, which had the uh, Nubus. It was a PC 
386 right. with new bus uh, cards yeah. and they had um, they just built their own it was a predecessor of the Q10 yeah. and uh, the C well it was a, it was a 6 band so it was really like a Q6 yeah. and a C4 and and an L1 thing in a box in a hardware right and i used to and I used to take it to uh, to do mastering from that to that. Yeah. And then we used to send it to whoever to to, to transfer it to six and thirty Sony yes. blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, and then one day it was it was in Tel Aviv in the studio. It was a sto stormy night, and uh, lightning hit the not the building but somewhere and the whole the whole power came down for the whole block yeah and when it came back on again this box never was <laughs> oh <dear. laughs> again it was it was the it was, it was a prototype yeah. and it was the only one right so that was the end of that. it was the end of that and um and the uh, mayor and gilad from waves i called them it was like midnight and they came like all oh, what happened what happened <laughs> and uh and after that, they offered me a job <laughs> <So>. <laughs> for, for blowing up their box. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've been with them ever since. And um, so, when you go over for your week a month in Tel Aviv, are you just working for Waves for mm -hmm. that whole week? Yeah. And what's what, so? What's a typical day? What, what happens? Um, I would just get there, and they will. Like I'm, I'm involved with with. I'm sure it's all top secret, and you can't tell me. But, well, um, yeah, but I can of, tell you what I. Yeah, what did you do, do on a daily basis? Yeah. It's not what I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm basically involved with all uh, waves projects, um, and it will be on on kind of varying um, levels. Mm. So th there will be some products that I initiate. Yeah. And uh, design mm -hmm. and even patent like the Q clone yeah. or uh, or a surround uh, stereo to surround processor and stuff like that. Um, there'll be other projects where I would just um, um, kind of go through the process through all the different processes like the vocal rider. Basically, all the products I would be involved with vocal rider. I mm. would uh, I was very involved. Uh, so basically, I, I work I work with the in the product department. Yeah. But I would do some R and D um, stuff as well. Some from time to time, I would uh, help with the graphic design, with like all the different stages. Yeah. Um, so so you're working in an office, or are you in a studio environment? I'm or? in a studio environment, and uh, but we have meetings and we yeah. have uh, you know company stuff and all that mm. and, so and are you working alongside a software engineer most of the time or are you no because software is mainly the the stage where we already have the product right so it's in a working form either on matlab or as a very kind of on what? On matlab which Mat is right. yeah which is how uh how you design the algorithm oh, okay and uh or as a primitive plugin yeah. that looks like some numbers yeah, on the yeah. screen or whatever right, right. Um, and after the product definition uh, is complete and, and and basically it works mm. and we know what the controls are going to be like and yeah. which controls we're going to reveal to the user yes. and which control which laws hidden. we're going to apply right. and all that then it would go to the software department and they yeah. would kind of make it work make it Plug Make it look nice. That will work on all the platforms and yeah, everything. And, I see. and then after that, the graphics will be implemented. Yeah. And, uh, so MATLAB lets you do whatever you want, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's, uh, yeah, it's um, basically it's very sophisticated. Is that it's running on a, on a Mac? Or is that a it's running on a PC. Right. I don't know if there's a Mac version, but in Waves we have like loads of them running on PCs. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's very interesting yes. and, uh, and it kind of keeps me uh, on my toes, you know, yeah. uh, because, because I'm, I'm always uh, into 
what uh, the next two years are going to be like. Mm. You know what I mean? And I kind of uh, and I and I help in making it as well. Yeah, which is uh, great. Uh, it's very interesting, and I learn a lot. Um, so do, do they bring you stuff then and say, look, we, we've come up with this idea, we can... Sometimes that would be the case, sometimes I would bring new stuff or new ideas. And how does uh, it work with endorsements, like the Tony Maserati and Ed Kramer and people like that? What's the? Are you involved in any of that discussion? Or? Uh, yeah, but not on the... I try not to get, because this is a very... These are very kind of personal products, hmm. so I would not interfere with the, with the sound. But sometimes just uh, uh, with the kind of workflow or or some you know some aspects that yeah. that people who are so involved can sometimes not you know forget about yeah. a few aspects. So I would I would just help. But my 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 involvement with those products was very minor. Um, I'm I'm more kind of. I contribute more to the design yeah. of, of the new So have you thought about doing it the other way around with the log me in you you staying here and saving on the airfares? Um I, I am doing stuff while I'm here as well, yeah. uh, for waves, but uh, but the personal touch yeah. is uh, and we argue a lot and all that <laughs> and, uh, you, you just have to be there. It's yeah, it's different course. because I'm having meetings I guess. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm uh, I'm also focused on that. Yeah, in that week. Of course, yeah. It's too many and, distractions. Yeah. yeah. So when you when you're here working, um, so if you've got doing the Pet Shop Boys, like, they come here to do vocals. And well, we did the, this album was done in Xenomania. In where? Xenomania, in which are based in Kent. Right. And there were a lot of people involved. Yeah. In that album, and they, they have like. Um, Many rooms in the house where you know one will be recording vocal and programming and mixing right. and uh, it was um, for me it was a kind of a weird way of of working because yeah. I I usually I work in my domain yeah. and uh, you know you're comfortable here yeah I'm comfortable here and I'm uh, so you were out of your comfort zone yeah and and yeah and it was far away as well. I mean, the yeah. commuting was is something I'm not really used to, except for going once a so month. So you didn't to... stay down nearby or anything? No, no, I used to go every day. Yeah. So do you live uh, near here then? Do you... Yeah, I live uh, not far from here, like yeah. 10 minutes. Right. From so it's very convenient. So what about yeah. Girls Aloud? Did they come here? We did that in Xenomania as well. Right. I mean, that, was, uh, that was the time I worked uh, with Brian Higgins in Xenomania for a few months and I was involved with uh, with those two albums. Right. So this was just sitting empty here, then, was it? It was. Yeah. 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 Uh, which is really sad. So, what clients have you had here? Well, I mean, this studio has just kind of been recently. Uh, yeah. How long? So, how long has it been up and running then? A couple of months. Is well, that all? A few, a few months. A few months since uh, I spent so much time building it. Yeah. And uh, putting it together and. Uh, and really, but you've been here for longer than that, haven't you? I've been yeah. building for yeah. for three years before. Right. Oh, so when I came I, here, you were in a different room. Were I you? was in a different room. Right, I right. was uh, in another studio, uh, but this studio, this space, has really given me the chance to uh, yeah, because it's to bigger. build everything from scratch. Yeah. So this was like a, this was an office space. It was yeah. like an open space, and um, so I just built everything exactly the way I want. Right. It, did you uh, have somebody help you design it? Or? No, I just uh, no, I just did it myself. Uh, it took um, a bit of time and uh, and a lot of money. Yeah. But uh, do I you use your ATCs much? Then are they mm -hmm. are they the one hundred? One hundred. Yeah. yeah. They they're my favourite speakers. I think. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. I used to work a lot on the two hundreds. Yeah. Um, but there was one studio, uh, Mason Rouge yeah. in That's Fulham, right. yeah. which no longer exists. That's as right, well. they had 80s, didn't they? Yeah. 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 And, uh, they're brilliant speakers, aren't they? Yeah, amazing speakers. And, uh, and the thing about these speakers is that they're kind of biggies, but yeah. you can monitor really quiet. Yeah. And, uh, and I think they're the best ones of the ATCs. I've never really got on with any of the other ones, especially yeah. as, as well as I have with those. They've no, these are really great, yeah. really good. And um, and the way they are mounted in the wall, right? Um, it just sound here. I'll, I'll play it to you yeah. in a minute. Okay, uh, great. It's really solid. 
Yeah, it's really solid, and you can you can move wherever you want in the room, and you can sit back at the sofa, and mm -hmm. it's not like boomy. No, you know, it's still. Um, and what I did uh, with this room, I I didn't want to have a door. Right. I wanted to have this kind of open. Uh, yeah. Um, so I treated the other room as well, so I don't get uh, nothing reflecting back. Low frequencies reflecting. So this is all just built yourself from. Yeah, well, I mean, your experience of being in other studios. Exactly, yeah. and I've been around uh, a few studios, um, which I kind of helped a little bit in yeah. designing and giving a few feedbacks and stuff like that. So I kind of know the process. Yeah. Um, and I just know what I want to hear, and uh, sometimes it can take a while to to achieve that. Yeah. Uh, but I think in any studio, it, it's a hit and miss. Yeah, of, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Situation. Well, that's the other thing, isn't it? You don't know yeah. until it's just a but, but I, d I do have about 1,500 kilos of uh, absorbers yes. in, in, in this room. So uh, it's very it's very solid. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm pleased with it. Yeah. It's sounding great. I think it's sounding uh, very accurate, and uh, but not kind of, you know, uh, like a lab, like an audio lab. No, you know, it's it's not too dead. Yeah. So you don't mind the lack of daylight? No, I like it. I like it actually. Um, and you worked with Bond as well, I saw. Yeah, that was uh, was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, uh, was that a programming thing, or did you? No, I engineered. I mixed it. I wrote. A few tracks for right. them. Wow. Um, it was quite interesting because it was kind of grand production. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it was it was uh, just at the end of the the era where records had budgets. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, and we spent it well. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that was uh, that was fun. And yeah. I had my uh, I had one of my tracks recorded. Uh, by the um, London Philharmonic Orchestra, right. Abbey Road. Yeah. So how, was it, how did you write for them? Because how do you write for a string quartet as a as a guitarist and keyboard player? Uh, <laughs> was it a matter of coming up with the tune and then sort of? Yeah, I had the, I had the right, tune and then I just uh, had to to write the parts for them to play. Yeah. And that it, it would just mean kind of um, playing about with the melody, doing some runs, doing some you know, virtuosic stuff, uh, every trick in the book, really. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, in, Great in, fun, in that yeah. type of project, that's, that's what you want. Mm. And uh, yeah, it did, it did really well. Yeah. And I, work on the sec I worked on the second album with them as well. Um, yeah, it was good. Yeah, and I met them, I recorded them recently, well, oh, earlier this year, for the High Tea Classical release. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them was on Twitter, and she she tweets about every five minutes. It's completely potty. <laughs> Eos, oh, she's, yes, uh, yeah. she writes hilarious messages, but oh, she really? spends all her time putting twi Twitter Eos messages. Chatter. Yeah, oh, sure. okay. appropriately what... named. Yeah, Ch chatter, but chatter. Yeah, she yeah. should be. Yeah, <laughs> that's what people do. I hear. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't got time to do things like that now. No. Busy making records. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, a good day for me would be where I would open my email and there will be very few messages <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to, to spend too much time doing that yeah so how does work come to you uh, these days Do you have management I have management I have I work with the rise management which is um, based in here and in New York so right, it's right. kind of okay. uh, yeah so you have uh, a variety of yeah, projects coming so that's, to you. that's really good uh, so you don't spend a lot of time hunting around for things no I never, I never, I don't know how to. I no. never knew how to. I, I was just, uh, I don't know how it, just, it comes to me. I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I always have, and uh, I'm kind of lucky, I guess. Yeah. That uh, that that's the way it is. Um, and you know, I try to do my best here, and mm. that's the best I can do. Yeah. You know. Excellent.